Good morning, good morning. I am Dr. Clyde Posley. Absent this morning, my uh, co-host, Dr. Mark Eckel. We are here for the Warp and Wolf radio show. We're here every week, 10 a.m. to 10 to 12, uh, every Wednesday morning. And we, we talk about uh, Christian topics uh, and how the Christian community can continue to use the Word of God to relate to the things of God and to do ministry in the city. Our show is designed to bring people uh, on on and discuss issues and ministries that they are doing to, to heal our, our city, to heal our state, and to heal our country. And so um, today we have uh, a, a special guest that will be coming with, in with us shortly, uh, Miss Kamish Nunley uh, from Healing Hurts. It's, it's a, a psychotherapist ministry designed from a Christian perspective to heal uh, wounds, past pains and difficulties and trials and, and, and um, bruised uh, souls that, that, that people have acquired in this uh, walk of life. And so she'll be, Ms. Kamish Nunley will be here uh, shortly. But I'm going to int uh, introduce uh, today the topic of, of how, before Ms. Nunley gets here, I'm going to introduce the topic of how uh, the Christian should relate to the Word of God. What should the Christian response be to the Word of God? And this is important because a whole lot of the pains and, and difficulties and trials and tribulations that many believers have uh, is directly connected to how they relate to the Word of God and moreover relate but how they respond to the Word of God because I am operating from the premise this morning that it is how believers respond to the Word of God that more than anything that opens us up to the blessings of God the ministry opportunities and it, but more than that it heals our own souls and strengthens our spirits and so we, we must learn not just to uh, believe that the word of god is god's word but that we have to have a proper response to it and an implementation from the word of god and i'm going to and i'm going to open up with the scripture here uh in uh, matthew chapter 13 which deals with the parable of the sword and in in this matthew th chapter 13 what you have is jesus teaching his disciples uh, from a parable, and just so you know, uh, a parable is uh, it has been defined as a heavenly story with an earthly lesson. A heavenly story with an earthly lesson. Yeah, and so in this parable of the sower, Jesus, who is the sower, goes about sowing a seed. The seed sim symbolizes here the word of God, and. He's going about sowing the word on, and he's sowing the seed on various types of ground. And uh, we're going to get into that in just a second. But keep in mind that Jesus here as sower and the seed he's sowing is word is designed to get a certain particular response from the ground where the word is being sown. Now, this is important because the, while we know that Jesus is the sower and the word of God is the seed, the ground that the sower is placing the seed into symbolizes the heart of man, the thoughts of man, the mindset of man. And so I just want to reiterate to everyone in this parable in Matthew chapter 13, uh, the parable of the sower, Jesus here symbolized is, 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 is in this parable is the sower. The seed is the word of God, which is being sown. And the ground where the sower is sowing the seed into is the heart. So what this tells me, before I go any further, and we want to welcome Miss Nunley here. We're glad to have her with us. Yeah. yeah. What, 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 this, what this tells me is that uh, the sower clearly is looking for a response from the ground where he sows. That tells me, Miss, Miss Nunley, that, that when Jesus is going about sharing the word of God with us, revealing the word of God to us, giving us pastors after uh, uh, his own heart. He's trying to get a response. He's trying to put the word finding mechanisms and methods to get the word of God into the heart of man. And, and so thus he's looking for from the hearts of men, 
a response from the word of God that can make all the difference. I know in your, in, in, in your field of ministry, I almost said your line of work, but <laughs> you're one of those blessed people whose, whose, whose line of work is, 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 is you're blessed to have it as your ministry. Mm -hmm. What do you find, as, as a Christian uh, psychotherapist, what do you find, uh, what, what place does the word of God have in what you do? Well, um, I want to thank you again for bringing me on oh, and thinking of to me to um, come on and speak about this. Um, the word of God, I mean, it, it has a place in every walk in life. I, I mean, agree. that's I agree. That's the foundation of it. And I like that you're using agricultural terms because mm -hmm. that's basically how it evolved into the work that I do. Mm -hmm. Um, for a long time, I did this work just purely based on psychological principles, mm -hmm. psychological concepts. And what I was missing was another side of me. There was something missing. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't feel like I was providing a whole service. It just felt That's major. That's a major personal. statement. To, that's a major statement. That I don't want to interrupt you, but <laughs> I want our audience to really hear what you just said, that you had, you were learning academic principles. Yes. And, and the historic principles mm -hmm. of psychology. But within you, within your soul you felt that you weren't providing uh, for the people, your constituents mm -hmm. at the level you could. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I would always leave the therapy room um, feeling like there's more that I can do. There's more that um, I have within me to be able to provide. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, my clients aren't reaching past their understanding of, of their threshold. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't until, you know, it was trial by error. Um, mm -hmm. Where God showed me that, you know, I am the one that has, you know, been in you mm -hmm. since day one. And you, right. your faith has always been fairly strong. Why are right. you not bringing me into that room? Right. Why are you not opening up your client's eyes to the to the work that I've even done within you? Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't until then that I realized that, man, that's the missing link mm. is um, people need to be empowered through the understanding of faith right. and the workings of God. And right. not that I even bring up God, but the Holy Spirit kind of moves in me mm -hmm. as I work with them, and they see right. the spirituality in that. that, that that's major. You, you, you're you making some major uh, claims that I believe, mm -hmm. and, and you you are introducing to some people in the audience some, some notions that uh, possibly they haven't really embraced. And that is that in when it comes to emotional healing, uh, psychological healing, God is a factor. Mm. That that it is not simply a matter of uh, what what you are suggesting. And I agree, is that it's not just a matter of seeing a therapist mm -mm. and 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 sitting and talking and listening, but that God, who gave you that mind to begin with, both your mind and the mind of of your client. Yes gave you that mind needs to be represented mm -hmm. needs to be acknowledged needs to be celebrated and, and i agree no healing happens in, as far as i'm concerned without the power of the word of god mm -hmm. absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely so so in this in this passage um jesus not only tells uh uh talks explains teaches his disciples in this passage uh, but it's not only he also um begins to explain the parable mm -hmm. and it's important he, he makes some major statements uh in this parable to help us understand how valuable it is how valuable it is for people who will have a strong focused stable stable um relationship with christ to have that relationship through the word of god mm -hmm. we're going to take a break in just a moment here but, be, but when we come back, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the role of the word of God in healing, in, in psychological healing. Because we have a whole audience, uh, several people in our audience who may have a relationship with the word, but I don't know how many of them really use it for all mm -hmm. manner mm -hmm. of healing. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take a quick break right now. And uh, when we come back, we're going to deal with that subject. And we are back on Whip and Roof Radio here, the Comlinious Ministry. And uh, I am Dr. Clyde Posley here hosting uh, today uh, in the absence of my uh, friend, Dr. Mark Echo, who is on a type of uh, 
uh, sabbatical, if you will. He's got some things to do, some some things to refresh himself and get prepared for the coming school year. So we have with us today Miss Kamish Nunley from Healing Hurts uh, uh, Psychotherapy Ministry, and we're excited to have her here. She she is renowned in, in our city and in, in, in the Midwest and in an increasing way in our country because of how she mixes the principles of psychology with the word of God and how she does uses it to do ministry and not just have conversation. And so uh, she, has, she has great success throughout the city. And uh, I'm, uh, what, right now, for those who may be just tuning in, I'm going to give her a chance to introduce herself and talk to us a little bit about what Healing Hurts Ministry is all about. Well, um, I do have a company that I founded mm-hmm. in 2009 called Healing Your Hidden Hurts. Mm-hmm. Uh, counseling agency and it's basically a trauma-informed care agency where we treat anywhere from individuals to families couples uh, dealing with some type of traumatic aspect in their life whether it be domestic violence or Mm -hmm. any type of victim of of abuse Uh, we have within the last two and a half maybe three years um, come into what's called the mental health ministry mm-hmm. of, of our organization. And we have been allowed to pilot our program at Light of the World Christian Church. Mm-hmm. We've been there going on two years, and now we're starting to kind of get grant funding that they're seeing the outcome, the successful, effective outcomes mm-hmm. uh, of the work that we do, which is going to my overall vision, which is to destigmatize mental health, mm-hmm. especially in the black church. Mm-hmm. We want to talk about that. But in all later. churches. Right. And so um, it's really been fairly successful. Thankfully, we have a pastor who believes wholeheartedly in this work mm-hmm. and understands that, you know, there's a difference between deliverance and healing. Right. And healing comes in where we need to apply the word of God um, in our lives. And so mm-hmm. that's basically what we do using psychological techniques, concepts, such as that. Really? You brought up, you, you just brought up something. There. I want you to elaborate a little bit on that. You said there's a difference between healing and deliverance. Yes. Explain that a little bit. Talk to us. Flush that out a little bit for us. Well, um, I remember last time I was on a show and I gave the example um, of having two toddlers in a mm-hmm. home. And one toddler was toddler is, can be very combative, mm-hmm. um, uh, maybe biting or scratching the other toddler. Um, and so in order to be delivered from that, the, the one toddler to be delivered from that um, volatile, the volatile actions of the toddler, we put up a baby gate. And so that allows us to be delivered from the circumstances. Mm-hmm. But the, the, child, the child that was bruised still has a certain level of healing to undergo. So, yes, so the healing transpires after and or before deliverance uh, takes place insofar as now we have to heal the wounds that got you to the place where you needed to be delivered. Mm. Does it make sense? Sure. Like, first, let's get you out of that environment. Right. And then let's deal with the trauma from. Right. From what you endured. Right. Absolutely. Right. So that's that's the main difference. And and what we do is we take... um, the the workings of Jesus, the workings of um, the many different disciples in, in the Bible, and we say, okay, what's the praxis of this? How can we use this practically in mm-hmm. our everyday lives to go on this journey towards mm-hmm. healing? And um, thus far, it's been fairly successful. I've learned a lot in the process. Um, my clients have learned a lot. You know, I'll, I'll, a lot of times I'll hear that people say, I've heard that story a million times in the Bible, but I never understood how it applied to my life, mm-hmm. like how I live it out, right. how I walk it out. Right. And so that's basically what we do. It, you know, it, it, it can be argued. That's very good. It can be argued that uh, uh, one of the major components of God's relationship and, the, and him trying to develop relationship with man is about healing their minds as well. Absolutely. Uh, in Romans chapter 12, the Bible, Paul teaches the, the, the enslaved, colonized Romans uh, there in Romans chapter 12, as, as he says, to be not conformed to this world. And then he says, be, trans- be transformed by renewing your mind. Then he goes on to say that you may prove that which is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God, which tells us, uh, doesn't just notion it, but tells us that God believes, God intends to heal us by healing our minds. Mm-hmm. And that's the exact verse that um, clued me into what was missing in my work, mm. was the understanding that 
yes, we are in the church and we make up the body of Christ, but many of our minds are still in the world. Yeah. And yeah. so we even, have to go through a transformational again, process. Again, right? Yes, transformational process. Right. Um, in order to get on God's playing field mm -hmm. and stop playing in the world right. with our minds and the types of thought, thoughts we keep. Um, one of the biggest things that I talk about with my clients is what what's your thought life like? Mm. What type of thoughts are you are you keeping? Are they Where are you thoughts from? Right? Are they right. thoughts that are uh, being inserted um, by the things that um, what they say the enemy mm -hmm. uh, what have you to believe? Mm -hmm. Are they thoughts that produce uh, positive fruit in right. your life? Um, and so a lot of times, just that alone gets people to thinking, "Wow!" So there's there's a lot of work that I need to do. Mm -hmm in order to come into myself and understand that that's not really my reality. Yes, that was my experience, right. but that's not who I am. That's not what I am. Right. And that's not what I'm moving towards. So, so it sounds to me uh, uh, like you are saying uh, by what you have said is that circumstances, traumatic circumstances and events have the ability to, to even define us. Absolutely. If, if we're not careful Oh, absolutely. And, and part of the healing is to uh, get get out of that environment first, as as your analogy with the, with the two toddlers, but then start to analyze and unpack mm -hmm. what what thoughts you have mm -hmm. that are defining your personality now. Right. Um, who you really are. Who you really are, because a great deal, apparently, a great deal of who you are is probably defined by that trauma. Possibly defined by that trauma. We allow that. We allow what people have told us. Mm -hmm. We are. We allow our experiences mm -hmm. to prove who we are. Yeah, like it's but God really says the best we're, teacher and it's not. We're none of that. <laughs> right. And we're all of him. And it's his blood that's coursing through our veins. Right. And so until we get into contact with understanding who we giving ourselves identity mm -hmm. and understanding that identity formation was not realistic it wasn't right. it was what we experienced pseudo right right but it, it's not what makes us right. uh who we are that is that is good that is good yeah that is good so i i, I made a promise before we, the last segment that we would get in in this segment and you have so so eloquently helped me slide right into this uh, segment that we need to deal with now. And that is uh, the role of the Word of God uh, in true Christian transformation. Yes. Uh, because in, in, from your profound analogy, we, we, can, we can take, it's easier to get a person delivered. If, if you can get them to change their locale, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. if you can get them from, from some noun, some person, some place, or something mm -hmm. that has been traumatic to them, mm -hmm. you can, you can get, it's easier to get them delivered mm -hmm. from the circumstance. Mm -hmm. But the real work is then getting them healed. Mm -hmm. Luke chapter 5 uh, says that Jesus was um, am amid some Pharisees and doctors of the law, and there was a man that had a condition and and uh, and four of his friends were trying to find a way to get into Jesus. The the core reason that that this healing was going to take place there was a verse in that passage in Luke chapter five says, "And the word of God was present to heal them." Mm. The power of the Lord, the word was there to heal them. I don't believe that any real healing takes place without the word of God. Absolutely, Jesus operates here and in, in going back to Matthew chapter 13 uh, in this parable of the sower where he's the sower the seed is the word and the heart of man that he, uh, is, is, the, is, is the ground he explains what he's looking for by that activity mm -hmm. so, he, so he's basically telling us that the word of God is designed to produce some stuff in people Miss mm -hmm. Nunnally I believe that when we don't let the word of God as Christians or non-Christians but if we, when we don't let the word of God have its proper place in our hearts. We're ruled by we fear. remain. Mm -hmm. we, we remain ruled by whatever we had our confidence in before. And we know that what the devil is trying to get us ruled in, it, to, to live by or to be ruled by, is fear. Absolutely. We'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, because and, 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 and I've heard it said by you before, because where there is fear, there's embarrassment and the potential of shame. shame. Thank Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, so we wanna, so we wanna deal with that. When we come back, we're, we're gonna deal with that. Jesus talks about hearing, hearing the word of God and what it's supposed to do. We're gonna get right into that as soon as we, we come back. I want you to know it's a joy having you here today because you speak so clearly, 
as you make connection between psychotherapy and the word of God. And it's really, it really may not be any separation. The, what the psychotherapy that we need, need just may only be the word of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. We thank you for that. We'll be right back with you shortly. And we are back at Warp and Roof Radio here brought to you by the Comenius Institute. I'm here, Dr. Clyde Posley, here with uh, Ms. Kamish Nunley from he Healing Hidden Hurts Ministries. And we are discussing uh, the role of the Word of God in mental health healing for our city, for our state, and for all who will give God an opportunity uh, to bring ministry to them from applying the Word of God through psycho. Uh, therapy. So uh, we're going to get into this word a little, little bit more about the role of the word of God and how it, when mixed with the heart and faith, it transforms the hearer. It gets the response that Jesus is looking for. We've been talking about talking from the book of Matthew chapter 13. And in the book of Matthew chapter 13, Jesus tells not only tells the parable of the sower, but he also gives an explanation uh, of the sower uh, beginning over here in verse number 18. Verse 18 says, Hear ye the, therefore the parable of the sower. When one heareth the word of the kingdom, again, that's the seed, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catches away the word which was sown in the heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. Miss Nunley, Jesus, in his explanation of this parable, says to us that just hearing the word is not enough to bring the result God is looking for. But there needs to be understanding. Mm. That brings to mind the idea of confusion that can happen around the word of God with so many different teachers and so many different uh, uh, people telling us that they have the word of God. They have a revelation. Talk a little bit about why it's it's important, first of all, to understand the word of God that you hear and how we can know that we're hearing the word of God. Yes. What what things, what, what, what markers, what signs can we see to know that we're in the right church, hearing the right word or hearing this sort of thing? Let's talk about that a little bit. Well, one of the things that I enjoy about the Bible as a whole is that it's, it's a blueprint for reconciliation. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's where my that's work comes point. in. It reconciles our relationship back to God. Mm -hmm. It reconciles our relationship back to others. And it reconciles our relationship back to self, mm -hmm. which is where God does majority of the work in terms of mm -hmm. purifying our hearts. And so in terms of being in a church, there's a number of things to look out for if you're in a system that's um, what we sometimes call a narcissistic system or an abusive system. I mean, um, you mean how the word is being shared? Right. Or, and usually that said, comes right? down to uh, things like legalism, mm -hmm. um, right and wrong. Um, if the pastor um, uses the pulpit to way, progress his own way. agendas, right. um, things that aren't lining up with the word of God. Um, then we know that we could potentially be in an abusive setting, a setting that isn't based on um, unconditional love and acceptance, but is based on keeping laws or keeping facades to continue the agenda to progress. Mm -hmm. um, I know that I've been in, I've been in both. I've been in a church where it was focused on healing and deliverance, and I've been in a church where the systems were set up as such that felt very abusive, especially for me coming from uh, a traumatic upbringing. Um, it relented a lot of the same symptoms that trauma um, relents in a person. Mm. So you, you, you're suggesting that the way the word of God can be brought is being brought in some churches. Mm -hmm. it, it, it causes some hearers to relive oh, gosh, yes. some of the oppressive traumas that they've gone through by Even, how they how they're hearing the word of God, mm -hmm. which works against them understanding God any better. It actually takes, the, it retards them. It takes them right. back into, into pain. Yeah. And, and that can also happen in healthy churches. And that's where mm -hmm. we get the whole notion of church hurt mm -hmm. from. A lot of times church hurt really has to do with the person and what they were bringing in the, into the church, into relationship with other people. It has to do more with unhealed people. Right. Than, than but churches. But if you're, if you're in an abusive setting, mm -hmm. um, of a church, mm -hmm. then it does relent some of the same 
symptoms that whatever traumatized you mm-hmm. um, um, allow for those symptoms to exist too. So we're talking about things like um, high levels of anxiety mm-hmm. when you walk in, um, difficulty concentrating, difficulty formulating healthy relationships where you're not being manipulated and coerced to do such things. Um, difficulty with um, sleep life, thought life, everything's negative. Everything is about pleasing other people or pleasing your pastor or, mm. you know, living up to the expectation. It's unhealthy, right? Yes. And so those are some of the things that go into more of a, and I, and I say abusive setting, but I, I really mean um, a setting that isn't necessarily you know, fruitful. I mean, because God can go into those settings and do just as much work with the people in those settings mm-hmm. as he can in a church focused on healing and deliverance. Um, but a lot of times when we're in that surrounding, we don't know that we're not getting necessarily the word of God until we, we start to experience almost a flooding of sorts of symptoms. So how do you know when you're in the right setting? Well, I mean, one of the things that it took for me was my friend pointing out, um, you know, that sounds like a lot of brainwashing that's going on. Mm. Like, I was being told that I needed to separate myself from family. Um, like, Jesus had to go off on his own. Mm-hmm. Um, I need to uh, separate myself from family. And so, um, and, and of course, my husband, he's just kind of like, no, that's not what, what, <laughs> what God teaches. You know, he focuses in on family, the church's mm-hmm. family. And so... Um, so it really took for him and a couple other people to tell me, you know, this is not rooted in, in, in God's Scripture, word. Right. right. And so I had to rely heavily on that because coming right. out of that, it took a lot of reconditioning. Right. And anything that separates family is not rooted in Scripture. Right. There's right. no God in it in any right. kind of way. Right. And so um, you have to look at the basis, the core of the relationships that you have in that church. Mm-hmm. Um, are they wanting to progress themselves or are they trying to help you along? Right. Whose agenda prevail is, right. is, is preeminent here. And God's is it going on the word of God mm-hmm. or is it going on their interpretations mm. or their conjecture of the word of God? That's good. That's good. Um, is it rooted in um, unconditional love and acceptance or are there conditions being placed? Well, and also, in, in this day and age today, we have to watch out for the word of God being presented as a means to pro- to promote a polit- any political agenda. Oh, God. Whether it and, be and that's conservative, so demeaning. liberal, whatever the case. <laughs> that's so demeaning yeah. to, to the the work to, that Jesus has exactly, done. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. The, the, the word of God. We have to be careful about that because what, what it does is keep people, trap people in darkness. Oh, gosh, yes. It traps people in darkness. God is not God is not interested in whether or not we are a Republican or a Democrat or an independent. Mm-hmm. God is concerned about how this word of God that he's given is applied. Mm-hmm. How do you know that, Pastor? Because it, the day that Jesus was face to face with Satan in Matthew chapter 4, Jesus told Satan face to face, Man shall not live by bread alone, substance, things outside of the word, but by every word shall he live yeah. that proceeded out of the mouth of God. That's how we're supposed to live, not by an agenda, not by anything else. We're supposed to live by the word of God. And when the word of God becomes second, right. we suffer. Absolutely. And we that's suffer. why I'll say um, whatever you learn, whatever you hear from anyone in the pulpit or anyone in your surrounding about God, make sure that you do your own research like the in Marines, the Bible. Like the Marines, Exactly. Look it up. Check it find out. Find biblical truth in that. Because the reality is, maybe they are saying something true, but God has another message for you in that. Mm-hmm. And so we have to find out what he has for us, what food he's trying to supply for us mm-hmm. in whatever we're being taught. And right. if you're finding that it's not lining up or it's not matching with the word of God. Right. Number one, don't be afraid to talk to that person about, sure. hey, you know, I'm not yeah. finding this, this that. This doesn't seem right. You know, but one thing, Miss 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 Nunley, that I think that 
that we need to be mindful of is finding a truth is not the same as finding the truth. Amen. You know, <laughs> you can pick up the Bible and the Bible is true from yes. cover to cover. Yes. So anything you read here is true, but that does not mean one has come to an understanding of the truth. Right. It's a transliterary text. Exactly. Like like the, uh, one of the Ten Commandments is thou shalt not kill. Mm. That is the truth. Mm -hmm. But we find in scripture the Lord killing something. Mm. Jesus killed a fig tree. Mm -hmm. Jesus uh, killed 180 soldiers. I mean, uh, God killed 180 soldiers of Sennacherib mm. on, on, on Hezekiah's behalf. Mm -hmm. So we know then that thou shalt not kill is a truth. Mm -hmm. But there is a truth that there is the truth that, right. that, that explains explains what, what God really means mm -hmm. by that. And so um, that that's, that's good. So so we, we, we've looked at understanding. We've looked at understanding and the role of understanding because according to going back to our scripture, Matthew chapter 13 uh, and, and verse number 19, that if we don't, under, when we don't understand something, the wicked one, the Bible says, comes along and snatches what we have heard. So what, this, what that suggests is that um, we can hear the word, but if we don't do something with it quickly, Meaning, and, and there's something that needs to be done with it is to start to understand it, digest it quickly. Mm -hmm. Satan will come and snatch away that word from you in mm -hmm. your mind. How does he do that? By distractions. Mm -hmm. Let me read it a little, little further here. Verse 20 says, But he that receives seed in stony ground is the same, uh, he that hears the word and then on with joy receives it, or he received the word, yet he hath not root in himself but dureth for a while for when tribulation and persecution arise because of the word <laughs> by and by he is offended mm -hmm. see we have to hear the word of god and quickly see just as quickly as we heard it we have to be praying just as quickly for understanding mm -hmm. why because if we hear it and don't quickly understand it uh get understanding for it then quickly what 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 goes on is the persecution that is coming Mm -hmm. Because the word of God, because the word of God has taken place, period, the persecution that is coming is going to attack that word. We have to ask God to help us understand immediately. One of the things I think, Miss Nunley, and I want to hear what you think about this. I, I think that um, we, how we present the word of God today. I know I've been pastoring for approximately thirty years. <laughs> how we present the word of God has to evolve because the needs of people evolve. Yes. And the methods have to change. I have I have increased the amount of scriptures that I use mm. when I'm preaching on a Sunday morning, mm -hmm. which is which is a little more non traditional. I still use the same structure, mm -hmm. but I include more scriptures. And the reason is because is because that you you interpret scripture by other scripture, mm -hmm. and so therefore the more scriptures that I I don't, I don't get out of line. I, I start from yes. a, homile, a proper homiletical format. But but I use other scriptures, either quoting them or taking my congregation through them mm. while I'm preaching, mm -hmm. so that they get understanding mm -hmm. along with hearing the word. So because the persecution, according to scripture, is going to come. Mm. So I'm trying to do two things at once while I'm preaching. I'm trying to give them the word mm. and understanding mm -hmm. before they leave here, because we know that persecution and tribulation is coming because of the word. Mm. I'd like you to talk a little bit about uh, how that sometimes, uh, uh, if it hinders what you what you do, uh, if it if it fight if if people's understanding of the word, people's lack of understanding yeah. of the word uh, works against what you do because you're trying to apply principles from the word. Yeah. But if they're not used to hearing the word, then they probably don't understand the word. Sure. I think one of the fanatical things about, you know, being a pastor or being a leader in a mm -hmm. church is to have a solid understanding of the word of Christ, mm -hmm. but ha also have a solid understanding of the human condition. Mm. And we want to be careful not to, you know, move into a category where we're preaching um, and, and leading people at the forefront with fire and brimstone, like right. hell, fire, hell. fear. Yeah, right, right. You if you don't, right, because <laughs> right. It ultimately that ends up working against mm -hmm. what the word of God has yeah. out outlined for us, yeah, and it, it seeks fear. people, right, right in fear, mm -hmm. guilt, and shame. Mm -hmm. And so we have uh, obligation 
to give them the word in God format mm. <laughs> with understanding that there's going to be disappointment along the way right. with understanding that there's going to be an opportunity for you to um, backslide. But God says, you know, no condemnation. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. um, when, when we use the pulpit and we just teach, you know, hell, fire, brimstone um, messages, you know, it can be very easy to get off track mm -hmm. of what God is telling us to do. And ultimately, God is really just telling us to love. Right. And that he loves us. Mm hmm and and we have to be because we are leaders we have to be even more careful because we're in charge of or you're in charge of souls right, right. it's one thing for me to be in charge of of the mind but i mean you're in charge of right. leading people to christ right. that's a huge what god wants them to be thinking obligation right. 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 right so when people don't have that what we say the ABCs of of the Word of God, mm -hmm. and they come in with that misinformation. My goal is not to get them to see where they're wrong, right? right? Mm -hmm. My goal is get getting them to see what they've applied in their their life. Mm -hmm. What about that is healthy or un unhealthy? What about that is working for them and against them? Mm -hmm. And helping them align closely, as close as we can get. Because God's not asking for perfection. Right. He wants us to strive for excellence. Right. And so having that frame of mind, helping them see that this is still achievable. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't understand it fully, it's a work in progress. Right. We take every day, one day at a time. Right. And so if, if I fall back one day, right. the next day I can, I can strive to do better. I can set a goal. Right. Um, to do better right. and and maybe apply appropriately some right. level of principle that God has has shared. You know, th that is really good what you've just said. Along with that, I think what, one of the problems that people have trying to accomplish the things that you, you know, you're speaking about, not being perfectionist, not trying to be perfect, you know, tr is there the constant fear of condemnation? Yeah. That yeah. if I fail, God hates me. I'm, right. I'm worthless. I'm no good. The and I was guilty that, of that. I was guilty. I, I, I was guilty striving right. and striving to please God. To, and to no, to no yeah. end. There is no end to that. Until God right. said, honey, you're my child. Right. That's I embrace right. you no matter what you do. Right. And so even if you go out here and you turn around, I won't be in that situation. Right. But when you come back, I'll be here and I will forgive you. Right. And, and, and I'll show you the way. Well, isn't that, that, that is just great. Just to hear and I, and I want someone listening in the audience to really to really hear what Miss Nunley is trying to say, what the Word of God is teaching. She's outlined, she's reminding us what the Word of God is all about. Listen, you are not perfect. And that's why we all need the Word of God. God loves you on your worst day. In the fourth chapter of the book of Romans, the Bible says that, that we um, have been made the right, Ab Abraham believed God. And it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Mm. Once God makes us righteous, we are never unrighteous positionally in his mind. Mm -hmm. And so on your worst day. So even if you sin, mm -hmm. it doesn't change the position that you're in of righteousness. Thank it may goodness. affect your fellowship, but it cannot destroy your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And so many people today uh, who've accepted Christ have so much trouble if they fall, mm -hmm. if they if they sin, if they struggle, and 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 often I believe it's because they allow the devil to tell them you have fallen out of a relationship with God. You and do not fall do. out of relationship he'll with God. He'll, he'll tell you God you. doesn't love you. God doesn't love people mm -hmm. like that. Right. When the truth is, God loves people just like that. Right. You know, r love is for my darkest moments. Mm. To bring me out. To bring me out. Yeah. It's love that's going to bring me out. So if if I fall. And God is not unwilling to bring me out. Then he didn't love me in the first place. Mm. Because to love me and my condition mm -hmm. is to know that because I have flesh, I'm subject to fall. Right. I'm going to fall. I'm going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. That is what grace is for. I, that is what grace is for. Absolutely. Um, and so um, we're getting ready to head into our next, uh, next uh, uh, commercial break. And we got to pay the bills and all of that. But I've just, it, it's a delight to have you in here. You know, as I go out, you know, I want to just 
thank you for this discussion about the word of God and how how uh, the word of God can choke. This passage says can choke what the word what God is trying to sow into the lives of people. The, what we're going to do when we come back in our next segment, what we're going to deal with is is we're going to broaden our discussion and kind of discuss uh, why mental health ministry has such a struggle in mm. the world today mm. and what the church can actually do to help itself do ministry. Mm. I think that's going to be a fantastic topic. If you're listening, go get someone, uh, get them by the uh, get them by the radio, so they can begin to hear us talk about the role of the church in relationship to using mental health as a ministry tool mm -hmm. to bless the world. You're listening to the Warp and Roof Radio. I'm Dr. Clyde Posley here with uh, Kamisha Nunley from Healing Hidden Hurts Ministry. God bless you. We'll see you shortly after a two song break. And we are back at Warp and Roof Radio, a ministry of the Comenius Institute. I'm Dr. Clyde Posley. I'm here with Ms. Kamish Nunley from Healing Hidden Hurts uh, Psychotherapist Ministry. And we are looking, we're, we're about to get into some more pointed questions. We've been discussing today in our first hour about the role of the Word of God and how the Word of God and the Christian response to the Word of God speaks to the level of healing we can have what if, if Christ gets from out the relationships that, that he with us that he wa wants uh, and so the word of God has a prominent role uh, in our lives and when applied to our hearts properly helps to bring about the healing that God wants us to have and so we talked about that in our first hour so we're going to address about four questions in this second hour and, it's, and we're going to get down to the real nitty gritty of what the body of Christ, what the church can do to help itself do real ministry in the area of, of, of deliverance and healing and, and emotional and mental health, healness and awareness. So I'm going to um, uh, point a few questions toward uh, Ms. Kamish Nunley. We're going to have some discussions. And the first one is, Ms. Nunley, talk to me. Let's a little bit about why uh, mental health is so stigmatized in the American society and in particular in particular cultures Absolutely. even the Christian culture or the African American culture or the white culture why the stigmatism in America well my first thing is I mean I have so many ideals of why mm -hmm. it's so highly uh, stigmatized but on the spiritual basis of things, I think if we think about the role of the enemy, mm -hmm. um, his goal is to distance us or mm -hmm. pull us, like your ver verse was speaking to, pull us away from truth. And so why would he want us to be subjected to something that could ultimately free us mm -hmm. and allow us to establish a relationship with God, the right. type of relationship that God wants with us? Um, so that's one level of thinking. Um, another level is just going back to the days of when um, black people were enslaved. Um, people don't always acknowledge the level and the frequency of trauma that took place back in those days. Say, say that again, because often when you bring that up, some, some people think, oh, you know, uh, some African-Americans, they, they won't let the slavery thing go. It's not as easy. It's not that simple. <laughs> it's not because, what? well, I mean, Lynch had a great plan mm -hmm. for creating a, a slave mindset, mm -hmm. um, and that still exists in families today. That that hasn't gone the trauma from it. Yes, that right. hasn't gone anywhere. Um, but we were coached back in those days by family not to go outside the realms of the family to talk about certain things because mm. it meant for us back in those days. Um, the potential for being killed mm -hmm. it meant that um that you were getting too smart or whatever and it just it po posed a, a threat so that level of trauma day in and day out about talking about outside business and you'll hear people say today don't take our business outside the family mm. i mean that's traumatizing and you can't think with everything that we were uh submitted under during that time that they allowed us things uh like counselors to heal those traumatic wounds right. no and so that's right. what made that that's, that's trauma really generational yeah, we talk about 40 acres of the mule but what about the 40 acres of the mule and the mule for the mind right right to pull me out of that trap Joy degree wrote a book called 
post traumatic slave disorder. Yes. Yeah, yes. And she and she, I love she, her. she discusses that uh, at detail. length about mm -hmm. it's just unreal to think that a people for two hundred years, three hundred years, uh, Joseph Clatterbaugh suggested that for three hundred and fifty years, the trauma mm -hmm. of that has been happening in the lives of people and there's no way that it doesn't affect the conduct mm -hmm. today. So so you think that that is part of why Mental health is uh, it's uh, stigmatized. stigmatized, right? Right, and because it's just un, un, not discussed, right? Yes, it's not seen as a viable option for. We were encouraged people. not to discuss it, in fact, because now it's it's evolved to mean that if we discuss it, then we're weak. Um, in the churches, if we discuss it, um, it's always this if then statement that mm -hmm. comes about a condition that's placed on. Mm -hmm. If we talk about that then we're not praying hard enough. If we talk about that, then we're weak. If we talk about that, then we don't have enough faith in, in the body of Christ. Are you suggesting that, the, that, that, that within the church there is a segment that suggests that it is weakness mm. to include mental health healing as Absolutely. a part of the Christian curriculum for, for soul winning? Absolutely. I, I will never forget I sat down in a church um, one day and the pastor used the pulpit to say, you know, and I hear some of you out there are seeking out therapists, or should I say false prophets? And Ooh. the level of shame that I felt on behalf of the, the congregants that were actually seeking out therapy to better their lives, sure. um, you talk about stigma in and throughout about what it means to even get therapy. And, and that's why a lot of people won't come out about it, because they're afraid of the prejudices. They're afraid of the discrimination. I mean, if you talk about something being you know just off kilter with with the way that you think about things or you're undergoing depression or anything like that you have potential for having housing discrimination employment dis uh, any level of oppression at that particular time and, and so of course it's it's going to be highly stigmatized no one wants to take ownership of that um because of the consequences of doing such and so i remember one time i was called in to do um something for the police department and I won't mention names, but I remember one of the biggest concerns was, well, if they're seeing you as a therapist and you notice something wrong, what do you have to actually diagnose? Because if you diagnose this, um, a lot of people are going to be resistant to talk about that because that affects their job. So mm -hmm. a very diagnosis of suicidality or depression could, a could make them have to go on leave and potentially lose their job, right. which added to right. uh, the so fuel and frustration. Exactly. So there's a part of the necessary healing that would help the force, help the community, yes. that the police officer, in, in, in the instance of which you speak... And they it, need it most. Want, exactly. And they, <laughs> so the pressures from the job, because they bring their own experiences mm -hmm. and potential maybe deliverances mm -hmm. that didn't finish with healing. Oh, wow. That's, 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 that's awesome. So it's permeable. Yeah. It's permeable. But not only that, I mean, there's self-stigma. Right. You know. That, that uh, I'm defective if, if I need mental health assistance. Yeah. There's which a, is, couldn't be worse. No more than you're defective because you uh, have low glucose. Right. Or you're defective right. because you had Crohn's disease. Right. Or, or anything else. Or you, that you had a stroke. Medicine can heal it. God can heal it. Mm-hmm. But I'm crazy. And so... Yeah, and that's a word we should not even... We should try to get entertain. rid of that. It, 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 I mean, it's purposeful. Right. It's archaic, though. Yeah. The reason that we we've use evolved. it now is, neg is, is right. has a negative connotation, right. but we've evolved since that word. So I don't encourage using that word because it reinforces the stigma that we exactly. already are trying to fight up against. And Je Jesus tells us, you know, Jesus fought the stigma. Jesus fought against the stigma of uh, mental health Healing. Mm -hmm. In Matthew chapter 17, mm. uh, there was a boy brought to the disciples uh, that they could not heal. And uh, so Jesus came down off the Mount of Transfiguration there in Matthew chapter 19. And ultimately, when he saw their lack of faith, he said, oh, you faithless generation. Mm. Meaning that their problem was that they, that they hadn't applied faith to this boy. This boy was uh, throwing himself in the fire. He was doing destructive things to mm. himself, and in that custom, it was it was odd that a father was bringing his son because ultimately, in that custom, children were more often with the mother, mm. and so here is a father in a role of nurturing that is non-traditional at that time, which suggests does not say, but which suggests 
that the mother was somewhere out of her normal position yes. in this young boy's life. Mm -hmm. And so this boy was suicidal, mm -hmm. throwing himself in the fire, trying to, and then and then going completely opposite, trying to dry, drown himself, mm -hmm. uh, maybe trying to put the fires out. And his, his relationship with his mother is distorted somehow. His father is confused. And then the father says, Lord, if you can do anything, help us. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus deals with the boy. He heals the boy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and the disciples at the end of the story, uh, Miss Nunley asked, why couldn't we do this? Jesus' answer in that Matthew chapter 17 says that this kind cometh forth by nothing but by prayer mm. and fasting. Mm -hmm. That suggests to me that there are some conditions that we will encounter as disciples mm. of Christ that are going to require more than just preaching to it. Mm -hmm. That are going to require more than just praying about it. Mm -hmm. But we're going to have to pull ourselves away, deny ourselves in fasting to separate ourselves mm -hmm. from some of the stigmatism that we have mm -hmm. and the misnomers about healing that we have Absolutely. and then pray and help people and then we can do as jesus did stick our hand out and help and help some people and i enjoy that you go back to that reference because a lot of times people feel like mental health is something that's recent mm -hmm. and that's right. they don't understand that you know it's been around it's been around since those days Absolute. and so that to me highlights um the necessary uh understanding where we have to embrace this idea of the human condition and that pain while it can hurt while we go through it, mm -hmm. it's purposeful. Because that in and of itself, the story that you shared, um, showed a purpose. Right. As to why it exists. Not that we're learning from the pain, but we're learning while we're in the pain. Right. And, and Jesus shows us why that pain existed, how it mm -hmm. existed, and what, and what we need we to do, do right. to overcome it. That's right. Right? That's right. And so I use certain stories like that to show people that one what you're going through is conquerable mm -hmm. it has been for years that's right um but two pain is not always a bad thing that's right so we'll talk about that in our next segment that miss 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 commission Nunley is on it we, we are here at warp and roof radio and we we are getting a we get we're getting a a, a therapy session for the whole city our entire audience this is Warp and Roof Radio. I'm Dr. Clyde Posley here with uh, Miss Kamish Nunley Healing, Hidden Hurts Ministries. We're having a ball talking about what the church can do to implement mental health healing methods for the body of Christ. We'll be back with you after this song break, and we're going to get into some deeper questions here on Warp and Roof Radio. And we are back at Warp and Roof Radio, brought to you by the Comenius Institute. I'm Dr. Clyde Posley, Jr. I'm here with Miss Kamish Nunley from Healing Hidden Hurts. A psychotherapist ministry and uh, we are having a ball today in this very in-depth conversation about what the body of Christ can do to be more visible in healing hidden hurts emotional wounds traumatic uh, healing from traumatic experiences overcoming uh, pains of yesterday to soar today and so in the last segment, we just talked about uh, some of the stigmatism that keep the church from getting as involved as it may need to be uh, in healing mental health issues. We're going to talk about now, I want to throw this to Ms. Nunley, asked her uh, this next question. Do you, do you believe, Ms. Nunley, that, that uh, unresolved mental issues play a factor in social injustice today and racial injustice or or even in the high, the hyper state of uh contention between democrat republican and just a political experience period we see so much on the media so much fighting so much we hear so much strong language from the white house and and the house of congress and the senate but we also see protesters whether it be black lives matter or other groups uh with such passionate and strong words mm. do you see um unresolved mental health issues, unhealed people playing a role in, in the state of things today in America? In many ways, yes. I okay. mean, because the core of, or the fabric of our being is, 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 is belonging and unconditional acceptance. And so our life is about how do we receive that, um, mm. 
either through healthy or unhealthy means. And a lot of times, because of social injustices or racial injustices, oppression is involved. Mm -hmm. And whenever oppression is involved, it relents right. to psychological and emotional uh, impacts, reactions. Say that, Say that again. I want the audience to hear that. Because oppression is involved, mm -hmm. it relents to psychological and emotional uh, reactions right. in us. And only oppressed people oppress. Yes. Right. Um, people who feel We have to understand that there's oppression. some level of, of, of pathology in those who choose to oppress right. just as much as it is in those who are who being are, oppressed. Allow it. Right. right. So it's 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 like the the thing with uh, sexual uh, pedophiles. Exactly. That's what I was. There is about. something right. that in, somewhere along the line went wrong with them, and now they're inflicting pain in like manner on others. Right. right. Um, and, and sometimes because that conversation is so nuanced, we just want to blame and say who's right and who's wrong, who's who's good and who's bad in those situations. Well, right. there's not. It's not a black and white issue. Right, right, right. Whenever you're dealing with any of the isms, classism, uh, socialism, racism, um, racism right. all of that, isms imply a set of differences. And people don't always like to embrace the ideal of, of difference. And so what do they do? They become biased towards it. They reject it. Uh, they find ways to keep it from interfering with their world. Mm -hmm. um, and so... We have to realize that in these differences, it can, it can't pro, it can't progress until we move to a more proxist state of mind. Mm -hmm. Until we move to a more, um, let me get to understand the difference. Let me get to understand why my oppressors oppress me. Mm -hmm. Let me have a conversation about being oppressed with my oppressors so that they can develop a level of understanding and we can practically move towards solutions together right. Right. instead of them staying on their side and us staying on our side. And every so often we get together in dialogue, but then after that it dies down after about a year or so. Right. And then we're reinventing the will over time. Right. So the answer to your question is mental health at, at the root. If they were not predisposed to a mental health issue, it comes as a result of the in injustices mm. and, and and things of that nature. Right. Yeah, you know, I, I, I think, um, I think, I agree with you. I think unresolved uh, emotional issues do, I concur, play a role in just how we see the world. Uh, I, was, I was at a function this weekend, and uh, the guest speaker uh, there, who's Dr. Eugene White, um, from president at the university at Martin University, where I, I, I was uh, used to be a professor, and um, uh, Dr. White said uh, gave just a fabulous idea, and I and I, I had, I've said this before in a sermon, that I was, so it shocked me when he said it. Uh, he said um, he said it's amazing to me how in the African American community, so many of us get up in arms over a white police officer killing a black male. Mm whether un unarmed or not. And that's terrible. It's tragic if, if that hurt. If, 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 if that happens. Yes. It, it's bad. But we don't, he said so often he, he has trouble finding the same outrage in us when, when black males kill black males. Mm. Now, and which is, which is equally as tragic. Uh, but uh, I, I'm suggesting that part of uh, the reason why many, some in the African American community uh, have this, this lack of outrage about uh, black on black crime mm. is that we see somehow a white cop killing a black male as more gruesome and horrible than a black male killing a black male. It's a trigger. It, absolutely, mm -hmm. it's a. It brings up it brings up ideas that we have nurtured and 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 pains that we have used as coping mechanisms mm -hmm. in the world to stay in our tribes, so to speak, uh, uh, relative to tribalism, tribalistic thinking. It is horrible if 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 a an officer, a black officer or a white officer, kills an unarmed person, mm -hmm. or kills an armed person. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 terrible. But it is it is just as terrible, and if not more detrimental, an argument can be made mm -hmm. for an African American male to kill a, uh, uh, an African American person. male, just as it is for a white male to kill a white male, because you are destroying the future and the seed 
of a culture. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and so I bring all these things up because, it, uh, remember the question was, do we see unresolved mental health issues as, as things that promote mm -hmm. the distance and, and, and the hyper state of things today. I, I do see that, and, I, and, I, and I'm watching it. We, we must understand that unhealed people... Hurt people. Hurt people. <laughs> have a potential to hurt people. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, have the greatest propensity to hurt people. And, and we, we have to ask the Lord to heal us all. Mm. We came here... The one universality about the human experience is that we all came here broken, mm -hmm. on our way to hell, not right with God, and unable to get right with God without the help of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's true for the police officer, it's true for the president, it's true for every member of the House of Senate, Congress, local state, local state government, it's true for you and I, the Burger King worker across the street. All of us are in a fallen state, and without Christ, we're going to display that fallen state and our misinterpretation of our experiences until we meet Jesus. Mm -hmm. We need him completely. Absolutely. Let me get into another question here, uh, Ms. Nunley. And that is, um, so what needs to be highlighted, you know, relative to mental health, and cultural perceptions. Um, what needs to be highlighted if cultures are to come together to do Christian missions uh, relative to the, the missions we need at home, domestic issues, racial relations, ed stronger education, fighting institutional racism, whatever the case, uh, the murder rate, foreign, domestic missions or foreign missions. What needs to be highlighted for us to work together as Christians in the black community, working with the white, the white community, working with Latinos, and so on. So this question to me is a really big question. It is. And um, for me, I try to find the simplified version okay. of things because, again, I'm focused in on practicality. Mm -hmm. And for me, the highlighted portions need to be matters of the heart at the end of the day. So you think uh, our big problems of not working together as a culture in the Christian community is the conditions of our heart. Yes. Going back to Matthew chapter 13, where Jesus said, listen, how your heart is is going to be how you handle this word. Exactly. Yeah. We need to use what God has given us to show our humanity and show how he has worked in and through us, why, what we are purposed for, and then reach across the aisle and say, you know, yeah, I've had... Um, anger issues or I have anger issues. Um, I, I feel like, you know, I've been passed over. I feel, you know, we need to explore the matters of the Instead heart. Of trying to keep them hidden. Right. Right. And be open and honest about it because that's where you can see, um, the true inner workings of Christ. Um, a lot of times people who step on an edge and, and, and they say, well, I'm going to reach across to my black brother. Or I'm going to reach across to my Mexican brother. Um, we'll say things like, and, and, and I remember seeing this because I saw this really profound interview, and I'm still kind of processing it with Pastor John Gray here mm -hmm. recently. Um, uh, we'll say, well, God doesn't see color. That's not true. And we know that that's not true. Right. This is an in-depth issue, and I know you have to go to break. But if we start seeing color more often... Um, we then open ourselves up to understanding the true personality of our God and that he's a diverse God. Right. And he, we have more university, universality, I he can't say the word. He intentionally gave us Right, color. because right. this and, is the yeah. platform of his personality. Right. He's, he's giving that in the, in the of melanin evil. of our skin, right. skin, but the concepts are still unity, progression, excellence. And in that, we can all relate suffering we can all relate pain we can all relate so if we open ourselves up to explore matters of the heart instead of trying to win bodies mm -hmm. to our church right, so that right. we can uh he highlighted that there's less people now that are being saved than it was years ago and he's like why is that we have more mega churches now we have all of these things but there's less people being saved because we're using our platforms Instead of highlighting what matters to show people how smart we are or to show people 
who we are in God. Like I, I hear often, I'm a prophet or I'm this, I'm that. Um, instead of showing our humanity, showing our scars. So how would you how would you put that in a statement? How would you how what what, what are we what are we doing? That, how's that create promoting separation? How's that? Because keeping... it's saying there's us and there's them, and this mm. is why pastors feel isolated mm. because they they have this idea of there's us and there's them. No, there's all of us, and we make up the body of Christ. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And so um, when there's us-them mentalities, it's hard, it makes it harder to reach across the aisle and find some room to salvage whatever differences uh, we and have. That's interesting because if it's in the pastors, it's in the congregation. And I know you're going to get to this later, but this is why we need to move to more of a, an emotionally healthy church. And uh, I'm going to be doing a, a training at Light of the World. Um, it's a three-part series on developing an emotionally healthy church. I, you know, uh, Paul said that, that, that Paul said in uh, Ephesians chapter four, uh, Paul is discussing unity, and he says, "Till we all come together in the unity of the faith." Something I think that many of us have never embraced is it takes differences to create unity. Amen. Because he's not saying conformity. Right. He's saying right. unit, oneness. Right. Bring who you are. Yes. What you are and your methods and your traditions mm -hmm. and even your, e e e even your hurts. Let's come together. Uh, uh, the, the, another biblical reference to it is in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. A hand doesn't look like a foot. Mm -mm. A ears don't look like eyes, but they are vital for the body to function. Mm -hmm. And and so I brought that up because God is 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 an intentionally created difference intentionally in the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. He made horses. One looks like a zebra. Another looks like a gazelle. Another looks like a, an Appalachia. Mm. But they are still four footed horses that can be ridden. And so the, the point. And so God. God, God is into uh, the kaleidoscopic expression of diversity. Yes. But at the same time, he wants unity. The ecosystem makes that entire diverse universe of the animal kingdom work together right. to help sustain us all. So and what God, he looks at most is matters. That's right. Of the heart. That's matters of the heart. We, we uh, you know, that, 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 that just really brings us back to this important place. And that is that the core of real healing with God is how much of your heart you open up to him. Mm -hmm. David said in Psalm 51, create in me a clean heart mm -hmm. and renew a right spirit within me and then I'll teach transgressors thy way. And uh, we, we, David also said in Psalm 119, thy word have I hid in my heart mm -hmm. that I may not sin against thee. Mm -hmm. You know, and so it, it's, 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 it's the heart. It's, 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 it's the heart. And looking at the role of pain in that, to take it one step further, Psalms one nineteen seventy one says, mm -hmm. you have afflicted me so that I might learn your statutes. That I may learn. He said it was and a good so, thing that I was afflicted. <laughs> that I may learn that. Exactly. So just to take it a step further that, you know, we don't have to get stuck at the pain point. Sometimes mm -hmm. we look too much at culture. We look mm -hmm. too much at our differences. Right. Instead of looking at the kingdom of God. Right. And what it's going to take for us to... Um, to come together and do His works mm -hmm. and, and and build the kingdom of Christ. This this is this is this is important because you brought up the word kingdom. I'm gonna talk about, a little bit about my vacation Bible school. The word kingdom is in my vacation Bible school. Mm. A later, I'll bring that up. But uh, you know, we we, we we talked about the kingdom of God. The the Christian body of Christ is supposed to be expressing itself in the entire world. Mm. You know, the question I asked you was. Uh, earlier was what needs to happen for, for the church, for the cultures to come together and do Christian missions. I put domestic, pose the question, domestic right, and foreign. Right. You know, I think it's a good place to say here that we must be careful about our Christian witness as a country, even in how we deal with immigrants. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we can't say that we value family and then do anything to devalue the family of people. Right. Who are not of Americans. our country? Mm -hmm. We cannot do that. We we, we, we 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 cannot do that. If we live by a principle, then we then we practice that principle, which mm -hmm. is the evidence that we live by this principle. Mm -hmm. If if I say that I, you're on here with me and and I am polite to women, 
then I have to be polite to you sitting here next to me, the woman sitting across, advertising across the street, each woman, these women as they wave and go by, because I'm practicing the principle right. of politeness. Right. I can't pick and choose when I choose to express that ethic. Right. And we it, have to be mindful of that. It divides. Yeah. And so I think that is the result of us making Jesus uh, a point of controversy. Mm. Uh, where we're, oh, we're yeah. right. Trying, you, you come on my show trying to preach now. I, I got this. I do the I preaching. <laughs> I'm only a, uh, wow. a student. That's great. I'm only a student. And so in learning, I mean, every day I talk to you about this all the time. I prostrate myself before God and I mm -hmm. ask him, what is, mm -hmm. I give the day to him and I ask him, what is it that yeah. you'll have me what to do? What do you want done today? And just through that interview that I was speaking of, we've made Jesus a political figure. Mm. And 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 he talks about how our, our uh, evangelicals they don't, uh, you know one set of us believe in the conservative view mm -hmm. of things and make Jesus about you know we believe in the NRA we believe in all these things but another more liberal make Jesus about other things so it's really hard on the outside looking in to understand. When he's not about either one of those right. things. Right. He's about God's agenda. Right. right. It's, it's right. really hard looking in to say, you know, this is, it's really hard to bring people over when when we're we're making things about the ism. When the church yeah. is promoting the isms. Yeah. Wow, that's some, what, what do you do when the church is behind <laughs> the isms? When the church is putting the, pushing the racism and pushing the classism and 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 pushing and they're uh, pushing misogyny fear. And, they're and, pushing wow. fear. That's what they're pushing, and and that is completely on the other side of the realm of what God is showing us, which is about grace and faith. Does the church? Could, could, okay, I'm about to get myself in trouble here. Yeah. That's what I do. Could it be said that, trouble, that, so. that the body of Christ, or segment of, of the body of Christ? are emotionally damaged and therefore it acts that way it, the way it acts say that one more time it, are there segments of the body of christ that that are functioning out of emotional wounds mm. and that's pushing some of their behavior as goes the leaders so goes the church mm. wounded leaders wounded churches wow wow that's something let me let me let me bring this final question to you uh, uh, and that is so one of the vital messages Christian churches need to be promoting if mental health healing is going to be sustained in the earth what give me three give me three no, messages <laughs> that, that, that the church needs to be and they can be brought mm -hmm. three things the church every the body of Christ needs to be pushing mm -hmm. if we're going to really be serious about seeing people heal mentally. I'll take it back to your agricultural references. The sower and the seed, Matthew um, 13. In order for a seed to be fruitful, it has to die first. It has to be buried. Mm -hmm. There's a level of brokenness that. Mm -hmm. that has to come about. And so we need to embrace the idea that we are broken people. The church needs to preach and teach based on the human condition, based First on of all, understanding. The needs to make sure, yeah, it makes it, it it makes it's preaching about the human condition. Yes, not about that church's agenda. Right. Go after souls. Mm -hmm. Okay. And making it safe for its congregants to reach out for some level of help without scrutinizing them. Um, or or applying those um, Is that number two? stigmas, yes. So making it so so, church should focus on going after soul, the human condition. Secondly, uh, you you say and making making a safe space mm -hmm. for people to be healed. Right, right. Okay, atmosphere. And then lastly, including some branch of mental health in in, in the ministry. And, and third is include a an arm, create an arm. An attachment to itself. Right. Because the pastor can't do it all. Mm -hmm. Not only that, not all pastors are trained mm -hmm. in how to help people heal or psychotherapy or psychology mm -hmm. in and of itself. Mm -hmm. There's there's really no separation between what we as psychotherapists are trying to do and what you as a pastor Absolutely. is trying to do. You know, our, you know <laughs> our goals are so much the same. Right. We've right. just been trained in and different disciplines. Christian. And we know that it takes a multidisciplinary approach 
whenever we want to reach anything effective or efficient um, in people. There has to come about in a multidisciplinary. A right. So you have to add that branch mm -hmm. and, and, and allow that to be the part of your church that is emotionally healthy. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the things that I love about Dr. Hampton is that he's willing to open that up mm -hmm. um, and say, you know what? It's, it's safe. It's comfortable. It's okay. Right. No, you're not crazy. No, you're not, you know, this is a having of lack of faith. This is a part to to. of the journey. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Listen, I want to take these, uh, up this final, just, just a couple, just a few minutes. And just have you talk about what your ministry is about, what you guys are doing now, what do you have coming up next, and how you plan to be used of God to bless the Indianapolis and Midwestern area. Mm -hmm. Our main plan, What's I guess, your ministry again? it's healing your hidden hurts. Right. Our main plan is reconciliation, and we do that through um, helping people understand servant leadership mm -hmm. uh, and helping people understand the true nature of counseling. Mm -hmm. Um, of helping people, you know, walking alongside them, helping them apply practical techniques to their uh, situations and uncovering hurts. Um, and lastly, we're, what's coming up next for us, what's, what's coming up next for us is we're doing a training series at Light of the World, like I mentioned, on developing the Emotionally Healthy Church. Where's that located? And that will be um, at Light of the World Christian Church. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's off of 46th and Michigan Road. Mm -hmm. um, you it. Right. Indianapolis. And to get in touch with us, if you are um, looking to bring in a speaker about mental health, that you want to explore any mental health related topics, or if you want to have a mental health ministry, mm -hmm. we offer that. All you have to do is go to our website, which is healingyourhiddenhurts.com. What is that again? Healingyourhiddenhurts, with a S, dot com. Mm -hmm. Or you can reach out to us by phone, which is 888 349 one 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 six okay so people i know some people that are listening they're writing that down can you give them that again <laughs> and so our phone number is 888-349-1116 right that's fan that's fantastic that's fantastic you know this this topic today is uh so prescient it's just it's so important it's 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 it's, it's something that every listener in one way or another mental health healing, wholeness, deliverance is touching your life in one way or another. Mm -hmm. uh, it's either affecting uh, you personally or someone you know it, uh, needs this. We all have some things from our past that are still shaping, maybe in an adverse way, our present. Mm -hmm. And God is able to heal us if we give him an opportunity to do it. I'm excited to have had you here. Uh, I'm going to have you back. We're going to be doing some more things in ministry. Uh, Miss Nunley is going to be uh, uh, setting up not only ministry at our church, but she's going to be a part of a, a symposium that we're going to be having. And uh, I just I just believe in Miss Nunley, believe in what she's doing. I've seen her results. The hand of God is on what she's doing. She's not someone that's just that's pushing an agenda, trying to take your money. But instead, she's someone who's actually getting the results that scripture promises us if we add to our faith, if we add these virtues to our faith according to Second Peter uh, chapter 1, verses 4 through uh, 8, if we begin to add to our faith. Mm -hmm. And that's what mental health healing is about. Mm -hmm. You have the foundation of Christ. Mm -hmm. You have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You, you've been, when, and when that happens, you're indwelled by the power of the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit. But what you have to do is add to your faith after that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times the hindrance to adding to our faith is the stagnation of unhealed yesterdays. Yeah. I like to tell people who have gone through things, um, it's not your fault mm -hmm. as a result of what you've been through, but right. it is now your responsibility. That's right. And, that's and that's where it. we're at. Good way to look at it. Fantastic way to look at it. Well, uh, a couple of announcements I want to share. With, um, we, my, at the Antioch Baptist Church, we are having our vacation Bible school beginning tonight. It's it's uh, it's a Kingdom Builders vacation Bible school. We're having it from from all ages, ages three all the way up to seniors. We are dealing with uh, building the kingdom of God, and uh, it's it's tonight. It starts tonight from six thirty to eight thirty, and uh, we're going to have uh, free uh, teaching. 
uh, free meals every night uh, for every every person that participates. We have T-shirts for you, and then we're going to culminate uh, this Vacation Bible School, which is entitled "Being a Kingdom Builder" this summer. Uh, we're going to culminate it with a free community cookout uh, August fourth, which is Saturday, beginning at 11 a.m. and going until. 3 p.m. or till all the food is gone. <laughs> We're going to have some games and activities for, uh, for the uh, those who participate. We're going to have a couple of big bouncy houses uh, with with the Black Panther theme, uh, Black Panther movie, not Black Panther from the 60s. Yeah. And so uh, we're going to have games and we're going to have just free food. We have some great cooks at our church. We have, and we're, and we're just going to have a great time. We just want to spend some time with the community, make ourselves uh, visible and seen, loving you guys. We're going to have it on one of our larger parking lots there at 704 East 32nd Street here in the heart of the city. If you have any questions about it, you can call um, uh, the church at 317-602-2460. If you don't get anyone at 317-602-2460, then try 317-319-1407. That's 317-319-1407. And you can get in some information about the Vacation Bible School, which starts tonight from 6.30 to 8.30. And we're going to have a tremendous time. I'm actually teaching a class about the power of male leadership in the body of Christ. I'm teaching a Sunday school class myself tonight, 6.30 to 8.30, about the power of male leadership in the body of Christ. We have a class for seniors. We have a young adult class for uh, 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 young adults. We have teenage class, youth class, children's class. They're going to be doing crafts and games all under the, the idea of building the kingdom. They're going to be wearing little hard hats, the young people are. So we're, we're, just, we're just looking to have a great time in the Lord. Come on out. Uh, the, we need you to register. Once you register, uh, the meals and everything is going to be free after that. We're going to have a great time in the Lord. We are excited, and we're looking forward to doing ministry with you. You've been listening to the Warp and Roof Radio uh, broadcast with Dr. Mark Echo and Dr. Clyde Posley. Today, our special guest was Ms. Camise Nunley, Nunley from uh, Healing Hidden Hurts. Uh, psychotherapist ministries and uh, we've had a great time today we look forward to talking with you next Wednesday at 10 and uh, from 10 to 12 Dr. Mark Echo will be back with us and we'll be back and forth uh, pontificating talking about the power of the word of God this broadcast is brought to you by the Comenius Institute that's designed to do ministry and bring cultures together and ministries together that are doing a work for the kingdom. Listen, God bless you. Have a fantastic week on purpose. Pray for our vacation Bible school, and we will be praying for you. God bless you, and as always, we want you to know we love you. Have a blessed day. <laughs>